All right, welcome one and all to the Sales Report Podcast, Episode 2. Uh, this is the podcast uh, it's, it's where we bring honest content for people starting a new endeavor who want real numbers and insight, a transparent look into small business. None of these, we're not going to sell you a course on how to do something. We're not going to give you clickbait. We might give you a little clickbait. This- but we're here to bring you uh, the real facts about what it's like to do the things you think you want to do. Yeah. Uh, today we're oh, well, uh, anyway. Hi, I'm Eric Shorter, <laughs> and I'm here with my buddy uh, Mike Smith, co-host. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Eric. Thank you for asking me. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. I am a little loose at the moment. I, I like it. I think you did the tag very well, uh, and I think I think you nailed it. Thanks. I was just just felt it, you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we had we had our first episode. Uh, we recorded last week with uh, Patrick. Very fun. Very fun. Um. It was a. Uh, that was loose as well in a different way. I think. Uh, I it think was, it was a trial. You know, it's uh, we're going to gain experience as we do this, and it'll get cleaner and cleaner as we go. I agree. Um, I, uh, I was I was talking to someone today um, about uh, a, a pretty interesting idea. Uh, I I brought up a segment from the first podcast with mm-hmm. Patrick. Um, ep- uh, excellent episode. I had a lot of fun. And um, there, there's a, a particular segment that I found interesting. And, and when I've been um, talking about the podcast in general with people and, and talking about the first one as an example, um, one portion of it really stood out. And um, the person I was talking to today that shall not be named mm-hmm. uh, suggested having little little clips posted um, from each um, yeah. podcast in, in some form, either, either like a, a YouTube's clips channel or like a... Uh, TikTok or something like Instagram, that. Instagram, Twitter, so, uh, gra- grab attention from like you know um, those moments that are like especially interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I, I think that there was definitely a couple of those already in the first episode, even yeah. though, it, like we said, it was a little little trial. I'm very receptive to that idea. I think that's a great, and I think our guest today might have some good advice on how to do that. He brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say his name because ah. we didn't introduce him yet. Well, perfect. Well, let me introduce him. Uh, today we are joined by our uh, our old friend, an old roommate, uh, no longer, but yeah. former roommate, Martin Munez. Welcome, Martin. Thank you guys Hello. for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course. It's great to have you. And uh, <clears throat> well, what's what's a one sentence description of what it is you do? Um, damn, that's a tough one. One word, media. No, one sentence. One you know, sentence. All right. You I'll, got a couple I'll, words. I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. What do you tell people when you have to say what you do? I work in music. That's what I what I tell people now. I work in music. I like it. Um, yeah. I, I'm a music producer. Um, I, well, I, I basically, I, I, I own a, co- a production company. So we take care of everything from, uh, you know, recording to tracking production, post-production and, um, you know, video. Mm-hmm. So uh, do, you, do you have a name for your business? Yes, I do. Uh, my company is called Marty After Dark International. I like it. Um, so, um, yeah, I feel like I've seen the name Marty After mm-hmm. Dark for, for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Eric mentioned we all live together. I, I remember that being, you know, your, your um, umbrella for, for a lot of what you, what you did. Um, where, where did the interna- international come from? What, what's the thought behind that? Um, well, um, it sounded cool. I think it sounds it does cool. sound cool. A little like uh, <laughs> prestige worldwide. worldwide. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I've over the past two years or so, I've I've grown into um, you know a, a company that deals with artists, you know, internationally. So and you, um, yeah, you have gone down to Mexico, right? Yeah, Mexico, um, and and even uh, parts of uh, Central America that uh, I've gotten to work with artists from from you know. Mm-hmm. You know, South America, even. Nice, very cool. And so, I guess we. Uh, what I was trying to think of earlier was kind of the. Well, let's start with the timeline of how things went. So, like you said, you uh, you mentioned that you do video. That's a more recent endeavor, right? Right. Yeah. In addition to your portfolio, it's been about a little over a year, I think, that I started to um, incorporate video in the in in my my production company, and that really. Um, it, it definitely helped with, uh, you know, moving stuff down the timeline because when you're working on projects, you'll find that you have these uh, bottlenecks, you know, you're waiting for people to get back to you mm-hmm. and, you know, instead of waiting for that, you know, you have something else to focus on. 
What do you mean? Uh, I, when you were saying that, I was assuming you're, you're talking about um, clients that you're producing music for. Right, right. So, so like artists so, that I work for and like, you know, won't, uh, putting the, 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 you know, the music out, you find yourself waiting for people. You know, you find yourself waiting for artwork. You know, you find yourself waiting for, um, you know, if you, if you, you know, not me personally, but, you know, you could be waiting for a mix back or a video back. Mm-hmm. Um, and instead, so I decided to uh, just do that all in-house. And the reason why that really happened was because I was waiting for a video. And, you know, instead of waiting, and I was going to be waiting for a while, you know, it might still not be done. I decided to just do that myself. So. Does, does creative um, input have anything to do with with uh, that uh, angst that you had or, or that uh, decision making where you decided, uh, I forget how you worded it, but um, to, <clears throat> taking, taking it upon yourself to do it, you know, because I, I, when you were saying that, it reminded me of me starting, um, you know, a little makeshift home studio and, and getting an electronic drum kit. I'm not a drummer, right. but I, I like the control. Right. If I have an idea, I can do it. Like, is, is that how you... Did that cross your mind at all with with uh, video and why you went that not way? Really, no? Not really. Not really. It wasn't so much the creative control because the few times that I worked with people, they, with other they videographers, they did a great job. You know? Okay, that's good. Um, and, you know, I like to collaborate with people when possible. Sure. So I didn't want to take that if I didn't have to. But mm-hmm. it really makes sense um, because I get to network with other artists as yeah, well. That's important. So I get to, you know, build relationships. It's just another... Um, Another way I can I can get that done. All right, um, so let's let's break down like what it is you offer as services. Um, obviously, you I think I've known you first and foremost as like a recording engineer, um, music engineer. But uh, how has that grown, and what else do you uh, bring to the table these days? Um, well, yes. So I, I track. You know, I record artists, composition, music production. Um, I also, I also connect artists with, with musicians. So if they need those services, you know, I know, and I have people that I can call. Are you, are you talking about like, like studio artists? Yeah. Like studio musicians, like, you know, you know, if they need a, a guitarist, if they need, you know, this, that, and the third. How do, how do you, um, how do you arrange that financially with, um, say, say I wanted to record a, an acoustic track with you and I wanted tuba, but I can't play tuba and you, you know, somebody that can do that. How do you um, facilitate that financially? Like, what what's yeah. the arrangement? Well, I don't like, really, I don't really look for a cut uh, in most of those scenarios. Well, I mean, even even just between them, the the other yeah. two parties. Yeah, in this scenario, Mike would be paying the tuba player to yeah. get right. the session, right? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, you know, I just I just facilitate. You know, if it's worth my time, then I'll facilitate that and um, put the two people in touch, or I, I'll act that as a liaison. You know. Um, so you you just like the the collaborative. Mm-hmm. bit of it and that's that's yeah. a lot of value added um in your service kind of package there where sure. they're not just getting you the producer they're getting you and all the connections you've made mm-hmm. that might help them and and that you know a lot of people think they could do it themselves and maybe maybe you could maybe you could make the same beat as marty here but do you know who marty knows do you know all the people he's tracked do you know do you have the space all these things you you record right. guitar with marty added. one time and then um somebody needs guitar and he hits you up mm-hmm. because yeah. he know he, you know you just have that camaraderie or, or that relationship. Yeah, for sure. And um, you know, it's also about like a brand, you know, because uh, um, I, I I invest a significant amount into like you know advertising and and marketing my brand. And so whenever somebody does work with me, it's uh, you know like you said, it's it's not just about you know getting tracked or you know getting a song made. You're also um, um, taking advantage of the brand that uh, you know it's already you're it's becoming already, part of it yeah or, mm-hmm. or in, in some so many words yeah right and that's yeah that's uh something we really wanted to get into here is like the income stream i guess isn't hard to imagine for what you do you know you serve clients so they pay you for your service whether right. it be audio video you know production helping them get on whatever you know it yeah. might be but where the money goes out, I think, is a little more interesting. Mm-hmm. Where where you're reinvesting, right. and I think a lot of people might even ignore the more obvious investments, being like your equipment and stuff like that. People would ignore that, um, but that's obviously a large chunk. But now you know, like talking things like more ephemeral, like advertising, I think is really interesting, and I'd like to hear more about. Yeah, no, absolutely. Advertising is 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 very uh, 
it takes up a big part of my monthly budget. Um, and it's, it, it, it's something that I constantly have to look after and like make changes to and, you know, adapt to because social media is constantly changing, you know, mm-hmm. uh, even like one year ago, the, the, the landscape was very different. And so you have to be constantly adapting. Um, but, but yeah, you should be advertising, you know, every, every business, you know, has an advertising, any, every legitimate business is going to have a, you know, a big advertising budget, you know, mm-hmm. even if you're well known. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, I think, uh, I think the changing landscape is interesting. Like, uh, I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of his, but I don't know if you've ever listened to like Gary V. Either okay, you. yeah, yeah, Gary V. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember when I when I first came across him a couple of years ago, I, I gave him a couple weeks chance of like listening <laughs> listen to him talk, you know. And uh, <laughs> I think at that time he was pushing so hard. This was pre pandemic, pre mm-hmm, like pre TikTok, mm-hmm. but he was pushing so hard like. Facebook is undervalued. Undervalued. Uh-huh. Facebook ads are undervalued. Like you should be pushing oh, is on the Facebook marketing? for like almost everything. You know. Uh, I mean, that's, nowadays he's, he's not wrong. Yeah. Bit, yeah. I mean, like, but I think with the advent of TikTok, and I think you've probably seen that, and might be in a part of the reason you're in video so much now. Like, it's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, social media is very visual. Well, well I mean, so far too. Um, the um, didn't didn't Patrick talk about um, Facebook Facebook Marketplace also? Yeah, uh, um, that was one of the three places he uh, listed yeah, too. One of the so three platforms you know, I mean, so. yeah, it's it's not, it, you can't ignore it. Oh yeah, it's 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 huge. Everyone has it, but it's just is is your market on? I guess is what we're looking for here. And I um, what 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 have you found for your business? What's the most effective or best return? You know, uh, up until the point, um, Instagram was very very um, that's what I was thinking. Very very um. Uh, effective for me but um i have a few friends that have told me that they've had great success with facebook Mm -hmm. so um you know it really just depends you know it depends what kind of product yeah but uh, i think i think it's instagram really jives with what you're what you have to offer too Mm -hmm. i mean it's it's audio and video for sure for sure you know i mean um i don't i don't remember the last time i even looked at facebook marketplace but like did, did this video even have a place there Oh, this is supposed to be marketplace. This is just uh, just Facebook, uh, just promoting on uh, yeah. in general. Okay, okay. So it could be basically the same thing as mm-hmm. an Instagram ad. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know about you, but I've definitely fallen down some nights where I watched one video on Facebook and then it, it automatically uh, yeah. brings yeah, you yeah, over to the, <laughs> just the just the videos part yeah. of the app, and then you're just watching videos for and they're all good. Minutes. They're yeah, all yeah. just good. They know, I, they I know, know what you like. Sure. Yeah, but that I think that I think that's why TikTok is is a good one too because. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and uh, I'm not familiar with TikTok, but is there isn't there some sort of cap on the um, the length of time the video is? Or? I think so. It's, I think it's like, and, uh, and they're just like randomly fed to you, right? I don't know. Well, it's an algorithm, so yeah. they, they 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 tailor it to to you know to fit just what you would like. Hmm. Yeah, Fucking it's crazy. <laughs> It's a yeah. sick world we I need, live in. I need, I need to look at TikTok because I don't I don't know shit about it. I, <laughs> before, before I ask my next question, I just. Uh, I have to make a note about the Facebook video thing because for some reason lately, uh, they keep auto playing after whatever I watch the same <laughs> gospel music song video, music video, and I just I don't understand what's happening. It took like th- after like the third time of the same video, I went to that page and blocked them. What's going on and here? And it's still coming how up. Many, how many views did the video have? Uh, millions and millions. But do you think it, it's like they're just paying out the ass for marketing? I'm and, positive they are. Right? But you know, I, like everybody gets the same thing probably? Yeah, but I actively blocked it and it kept playing. Like After? it keeps coming up, yeah. I'll show you later. I'll play any video and then it'll, <laughs> it'll just it'll just start playing that, Lord, bring me down. I don't know. Is it good? It's not bad, but it's not what I want. It's not bad, but it's not it's good. Not, it's not good enough to be played after every video. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I was, I was going to ask. So um, I think I remember seeing that recently you, uh, Marty, you, you reposted or shared a, a video of someone you worked with, a TikTok video with uh, some crazy amount of views. Oh, yeah. Dan Sur. Was that it? Was it? Was Do that with a, the hair. Uh, my my memory is it might have been some guys on stage or something. Like, oh, okay, that's a different video. No, no, no yeah. But I, I um, could be wrong. I might, yeah, I, I might be conflating them. Uh, but go, was this a dancer? Was uh, it? yeah, he's an artist that I work with. He's from Utah. 
uh, and mm-hmm. he's okay. fucking. He has over a, a million and a half followers on TikTok right now. Wow, he's breaking, fucking breaking out of what's, YouTube. Bro, what's, what's his deal? What's um, um what's his genre? A, he, what's his uh, approach? Like, what's, uh, what's his? What's I, I, you know he he makes such different type of music, but I really got introduced to him through Trap Gorillas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so it's a funny story because someone stole my beat. <laughs> and was passing it off as theirs oh. and next thing i know somebody sent me this artist that i work with the guitarist sends me this song uh this video and it's like it's my beat mm-hmm. and it says produced by some other dude oh, so I, I hit him up and i'm like what's going on here and he's like oh um i don't know man this guy actually sold sold me the beat and I hit him up. I was like, bro, what the fuck is going on? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and so we got that cleared up, and that actually developed into a relationship whoa, whoa, with me and the artist. Whoa, 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 whoa. You got it cleared up? <laughs> what, what, what? Sorry. Well, like, the producer, what, what? no, the produ- we sent the producer to hell. Okay. okay. We, we sent him to hell. He's okay. Like, he's oh, oh I, I got you. The guy, me that, and the, that, artist. Sold, the guy that sold him. The, you, you got cool with the artist, but right. the producer. Okay. Yeah, we sent him. I was, him like, I was like, how do you. Get over okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Copy, he's, copy. He's out of the picture. He's done for. <laughs> okay, copy. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, that started a relationship between me and him. And uh, yeah, because when I saw the video, I was like, it already had 30,000 views. And I'm like, how does this have more than the one that I just put out? <laughs> yeah, this is the beat. same with I, my beat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but yeah, like, you know, it goes back to, you know, it, collaboration is key. And know? that yeah. shows some, I mean, just more to your credit and kind of your ethos there where, yeah, of course you were offended and like what's going on here, but you turned it into a new business relationship oh for sure yeah a new relationship and a yeah. new partnership of some some kind yeah i mean he ended up buying beats after the fact you know he, he uh they clearly liked your beats he, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and um and i've been working with him ever since you know um he's and then ever since he, he started blowing up on tiktok and um yeah i mean you know i went to utah to shoot some videos for him too oh very cool so you know it's like you got to use all, all your resources i think especially if you if you're in if you're in an industry like music like you mm-hmm. know it's it, you have to you have to use everything you have, for sure. So you mentioned cr- uh, Trap Kratos there. Yeah. Um, I think, Mike, oh, that's what you wrote down. That's See, what I wrote. We were both thinking it. We want to get I back to it. this. See, that, uh, in addition to being the title of one of your projects, uh-huh. is, uh, yeah. w- would it be safe to say like a genre you stumbled upon? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a style of music, for sure. And um, it seems like to me... Th- that moment where you started working on that and fell into that world, like uh, opened up a lot of doors for you from an outsider's perspective. Definitely. Would you absolutely say so? did, yeah. Definitely. It opened me up to a lot of relationships and, um, um, just the, um, the imagination, you know, just mm-hmm. a, a lot of creative, uh, imagination that came from that, from that moment. And that, you know, and, and for those who don't know, like a uh, trap crudos would be like a blending of, Kind of, you know, obviously trap music with like traditional Mexican music, right? Uh, yeah, in a sim- in a similar way to like uh, this is America was like Chato Campino's like blending of uh, gospel and like, yeah, gospel and trap? like trap, uh, right, like, right, yeah, traditional black music mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. and the most modern black music and similarly over here with trap crudos, it's kind of like a it seems like a, it's it's a wave at, at least at least yeah. at a period of of your um, your career mm-hmm. it, it's it's synonymous with you I think. You yeah, know? no, it's a whole hybrid, and um, and it, it it is really special, especially um, incorporating you know cultural things with um, something that is like just like really popular, you know, mm-hmm. and like putting 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 a, a, a spin on it, and um, yeah, it's just it's really unique, and 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 it's it's got to be frustrating and humbling to see people ripping you off. <laughs> You know nah, what I mean? it's cool, man. You know, um, like it's got to suck, but it's also got to be like I got something here. Kind of flattering, yeah, you know? yeah, it's it's kind of flattering. I've never been jacked before, mm-hmm. so <laughs> never like I've been putting out music for years and years, decades even, and never had people try to steal my beats like that. So yeah. I, there was multiple of them. You know, it wasn't mm-hmm. just one. You know, so and then you know. Few months down the line, I see other artists doing the same thing, you know. So it's like, you know. Do you do you think? Um, so I, I mean, I guess I guess we're already touching on that, but the, um, I guess um, do you think that it affected your business and and further? Do you think that it, it affected your um, ability to 
gain more clients and did it affect your your business income like that that breakthrough that you had with with trap Corritos? like I would say most definitely because yeah. after, did after you the see, fact you saw like a like a monetary and like business impact after yeah. the fact I mean it went from kind of like almost non-existent to you know I was actually selling exclusives you know mm-hmm. you know getting paid um, even 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 for me to even get three hundred dollars for a beat was crazy mm-hmm. you know that's, that's that sounds amazing <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> let alone have it be from somebody from California or somebody you know? yeah oh, yeah and getting into new circles and other people who might buy beats and stuff like that or might need more yeah. work yeah. and I'm, I think what I'm uh, curious about is like you're almost uh, that genre is kind of limited to your culture and like your heritage and you're what, like uh, at least half Mexican, mm-hmm. half Honduran, was it? Yeah. Okay. So like, you know, that's, that's obviously kind of personal to you, but, um, how, I, how, I don't know. How do you feel about kind of, uh, what am I trying to say here with, uh, with grace? <laughs> how do you feel about just uh, the opportunity to work in something that's so specific and that not most people couldn't do and wouldn't understand how to do it. Well, it's niche marketing, mm-hmm. you know. That's the cool thing about it is like, at, you know, uh, I guess during this all this whole period, I was, um, you know, I, I read a lot of audio books, and uh, this one business book talked about how you know creating your 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 niche um, target audience is one of the 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 keys to being successful with creating a new business because you get to focus all your marketing money on that niche mm-hmm. and so you, you get to hit them harder um and i had i had i had a lot of good i had great success with it you know reaching reaching the audience i was reaching a lot of people that i w- you know somebody made a fan page of me you know <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> you know <laughs> so, well, um, i'd imagine with any niche market um you know, I'm trying to break into a niche market myself with something completely different. But if you get a more fervent, like a uh, consumer, need, and, yeah, they they need it and they can't get yeah. it anywhere else. Yeah, it's so specific, mm-hmm. and they f- they feel appreciative that someone's creating something for their you know passion. For sure, yeah. for sure. It's it's it it makes it makes it great because it's something that you want. But then it also f- almost feels like you're writing it for them specifically like you're writing it for that person that was looking for that type of music and even you know? for yourself you feel like a connection to them more you know like it's like it's like when you find a band that nobody knows about and you love them like they're, they're just and yeah. that's what it is it's just it's like it's perfect that's how, i think that's how you get like a cult following is when you you know yeah you know dedicate yourself to those um you know that small group yeah, and, and very very dedicated followers like that can um can really help you grow and and be your your backbone, your foundation. Yeah. Well, that's half the time. That's how. That, this is how I was. Things. This is how how I was finding out that people were stealing my stuff is through <laughs> these listeners that would they would hit me up and tell, like, let me know. They're oh, like your yeah. army. They're like, hey, yo, check out this jag. <laughs> look, look, look at this jerk. <laughs> <laughs> you believe hey, this guy? This guy's gonna rob <laughs> Marty. That's our schmo over here, dude. <laughs> uh, dude. Um. Yeah, I mean, we're making our way uh, nicely through this outline uh, without even having to try too hard. I Not mean, yeah, it's it's very very natural so far. Uh, what do you think about this uh, top line second page, Mike? I feel like that was uh, kind of something you wanted to address. You want to ask Marty a question? Oh, if we go. I can't re- I can't understand the, the question I wrote. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, let me read this again. Do you remember this question? I remember us writing, and you'd be like, "You should probably ask this," but I don't. Let's um, let's let's skip it. Oh, that was my that was my question. I'm sorry. Oh, I it was the, I, okay. I read the first couple of words, and I assumed it was yours. That's my fault. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So this is something. Uh, you know, we, we've glanced over here. Is that well, you you started as an artist primarily, right? You were trying to. Like we're talking like Mech sixteen, Mech sixteen, like yeah. early days. Yeah, no, I uh, was primarily. I mean, I started as a rapper, mm-hmm. yeah. and, and then, then producer. Like started, you, yeah. you, you kind of took the route. Like I'm going to produce for myself, and then eventually, I imagine someone was willing to pay you, or you work with someone for free, probably for a while, and that kind of stuff. You know, I think one of my first clients was like this uh, religious group. Like they were like a a, du- a duet. It was like a husband and wife. Hmm. How how old were you when when you were producing? I was like them? fifteen. I was like fifteen. I I, re- I recorded them in my basement. What? Oh. Yeah, 
And I even they even um, got like CDs made. Like I did the whole thing for them. I did the, I did the artwork for it's them. It's so exciting because it was probably their first project they ever had recorded. Yeah, right? no, for sure. That's an exciting moment. Uh, yeah. So how did um, how did you get linked up with them? How did that arrangement happen? A friend at school who's in the church. He's a, I think he was a drummer from the church, and like he knew that I recorded people. He actually hooked us up. <laughs> Very cool. It's, yeah, that's awesome. And then, I mean, uh, you know, you had probably years. I mean, you've been making music as long as I've been aware of your existence. So, <laughs> yeah. um, like, uh, and I've always been fond of your production, even when we were 16 years old. And I heard like uh, your diss track of this other kid, <laughs> and I was like, yo, like, not only is he tearing this guy apart, but he's doing it to a sick beat. <laughs> uh, so like yeah, you've you know you've been producing shit. for yourself for a long time self taught uh, you know entirely I imagine and uh, self taught mm-hmm. well I went to school oh, did, uh, eventually I tried, yeah I went yeah, to school for it yeah uh, after after high school I went to school for audio engineering it was a nine month program and actually it did teach me a lot because it was cool you know being in, in the room mm-hmm. with uh, professors like you know engineers who've really done it before so it was cool it was a lot to take uh, all at once but. I got a lot better after that. Yeah, I mean, I, I was in a similar program after high school right. uh, a couple of years later, and uh, yeah, it's. I had conflicting feelings about it when I left. I was like, I could have learned this all yes, on my own. I, I agree. Yeah. But I wouldn't have. I, I, yeah, I understand. You really can. Or would it have taken longer? Maybe. Yeah, yeah it's. I think. Uh, it's it, it, there's a value they provided. It wasn't the dollar uh, amount that was too high, yeah. but that's 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 <laughs> it wasn't college equal to or, the or any, any it wasn't kind quite of all that, like that but, in a nutshell. But I, I agree, and if I if I if I can add on to your sentiment, um, uh, I think being used to like the school structure, mm-hmm. at least for me, like that just made total sense. Mm-hmm. I was getting to the point where I was no longer interested in anything that school has had to offer me. And the whole time, the, the entire time is like, I'm making music and like, that's really my thing. And, uh, put, to put me in an atmosphere like that, there was an atmosphere where I thrived in, you know? Yeah. And, and you were, I mean, you were young then, uh, like what did your parents think? Were they supportive? Were they worried? Um, they weren't neither here and there. I don't re- remember getting too much like resistance from them. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was the only thing I was interested in. So I did it. And mind you, you know, the entire time since, you know, my mom has been telling me, oh, you know, you should look at college and you should, you should, uh, think about consider college and all that. Um, so, you know, you know, they probably, you know, still, still feel the same way, but yeah. <laughs> whatever. It's that, it's, it's, at some it's point it's you're, an adult norm, you're following man. your own dreams and they got to nah, figure yeah. it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's okay. So you're, you're young, right out of high school, went to a music school, um, but you'd had you'd have had some clients at least uh, leading up to that even as a teenager um, on your own on your yeah. own merit yeah and I don't know when do you feel like it clicked where you were like I'm gonna do this as a, a more serious venture you know like a um so I had a job I had a job um, like selling mattresses essentially mm-hmm. and um, you know I used that money to to just like kind of invest in my studio because. Um, Right before I got that job, um, you know, I was basically just doing that, like just engineering for people freelance. Mm-hmm. You know, they would come to my house or, you know, eventually I got a spot at this other small establishment, local. Um, and it, it kind of didn't work out just the way that I was doing business. So it was really my dad who ended up bringing up the fact that, you know, he had a, he had a, 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 pr- a building available right next to his that was basically like a shed. You mm-hmm. know, there, it was nothing there. It was just like basically storage. It was like mess. And um, and he had he brought up the idea, and I was like, well, you know, I think it makes sense. And uh, you know, you can never go wrong when you when you're when you're doing something that you love. Mm-hmm. You can't go wrong, even if you invest all this money, and you end up losing it you or whatever. The best, you yeah. Can. You know what I'm saying? So um, so I was like, yes, let's do it. And I started uh, you know, putting all this stuff on on credit cards, you know, and um that definitely pushed me. Once you invest that money, you know, it's, it's kinda like you're you know, all right, you're let's put it. it to use. Mm-hmm. And um and like, you know, further down the line, uh, the job was just uh just offering me nothing. Like there was no growth in sight. You know, I was spending my the prime hours of my life in a room by myself for eleven hours a day. And it, it just what, wasn't what, it. What was the, the age range that you were at the mattress spot? 
Uh, so if it was 2015, that's six years ago. Like 23. I was 23. That was that was when you left, or that was that's when I started. That's when started. I got the job. Okay. okay. So um, so like three years after, more or less, I you know. Yeah, while, while we were living together, right? I think the three. Yeah, no, I, I remember. There. I remember stopping there mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and dropping off uh, Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone's yeah, everyone at least once, maybe twice. I remember that's stopping there was, once or twice we, too, and I was yeah. just like, "What is forty? We, we, we do we, yeah, not, I would, I would, I would stop by there and drop you off a taco or <laughs> Dog, two, and just like crazy. walk around the store and like lay down on some. It's funny as hell. <laughs> I remember <laughs> coming in. I came in once, and I don't remember why I stopped in, but you were like boxes. 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 That might have been it. Boxes? Yeah, I think I was looking for boxes for my yeah. own. <laughs> but Marty was like, uh, he was. He says, uh, yeah, man. I think it was. It had just. It had just rained or something. And Marty's like, yeah, man. This. This people came up here trying to get a mattress. They called me and everything. Like they've been playing this all day long, right? They wait till it starts raining. They get here. <laughs> then they ask me if I got a cover or something, if I can help them out. I'm wearing a suit. I'm not going out there. <laughs> you know, Marty's always wearing a suit. He's, Martin, not, he's not going I'm, out in the I, rain. Yo, crazy? Uh, yeah, for, for anyone um, not watching, um, Martin is not wearing a suit. Yeah, and I, a, I have been departure. seeing... Uh, no, I mean, I've been seeing Martin wearing, wearing suits less, but... Yeah. This time was it's a pandemic, was, was you know? prime was prime suit Marty prime suit like, time yeah. like we lived with him and I feel like this man went to sleep in his suit <laughs> <laughs> or just immediately woke up and like I I can't see me without the suit I can't go and and, and grab a, a bottle of water I need like to put this. the suit on can't take a piss unless, unless, unless he was exercising in which case it was very very suit. casual yeah, yeah, yeah that's funny nah, it's, it's 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 facts though all oh, right no, it's 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 like a, a small jab but. Respect for wearing the yeah, suit all the time. You can't really you jab always, the guy. You, like, always, you always look good. <laughs> this guy's always looking great. Yeah. Like, look at him. <laughs> I look like a schmuck in my, Terrible my stupid ass jeans. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so I think uh, my, the, the point of my line here, I was supposed to read eventually, yeah. was um, yeah. So like, you, uh, let's fast forward this story a little bit. Um, so you, you you set up the studio. You kind of put all the work into that building, adding yeah. all the cabling, yeah. cleaning it out, buying a giant. You know, yeah, uh, board. mixing board. Well, the mixing board was probably like the final nail in the coffin because it was like so steep. I remember I had just, I bought, I bought the console, and because I was fed up with with that job and just the the lack of uh, growth opportunities. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Um, I decided to leave that job and and try uh, another sales position. You know, because you know my, my cousin uh, was working there. But I remember having to pay off this six thousand dollar console. Mind you, the financing was six G's for that. Six G's Ooh. for that, and it's the a, financing what twenty percent APR. <laughs> well, it was zero percent, but it was zero percent uh-huh. six months. Okay, so that was a stack a month. Mm-hmm. Mind you, I just quit my job. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I, I just quit my like, job. It was like you said, though. I mean, you're 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 in it. It's yeah. where you're going. You do yeah. full the head yeah. no, yeah, no yeah, way yeah. out, but just I went full retard. You know, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Or in a bathtub, laugh me ass off. Um, so yeah, after that, um, you know, um, it just it just got to a point where I wasn't I wasn't feeling like there was any opportunity to grow there, mm-hmm. you know. So um, why not reinvest my time in um, in what I love to do, mm-hmm. you know? Because um, I kept getting these so so. Uh, my my cousin brought up the job to me, you know. He was offering this. It's in my in my in my mind, this came from the universe. This is a sign from the universe that I'm not I'm not where I should be. Mm-hmm. That happened again, like about a year later. Mm-hmm. Somebody else, actually, uh, Solar. Oh yeah, yeah, Solar. Yeah, somebody brought this to my attention. Actually, it was a friend of mine, Cortez. <laughs> who uh, he said, "Oh yeah, you should hit this guy up." Famous you know, diss track victim. <laughs> R.I.P. Um, <laughs> so it was it was him. Who, he was actually uh, he was like, yeah, you should hit this guy up because he's doing solar. He's getting a lot of money. Again, another sign from the universe. And I was I was like, you know what? This doesn't feel right. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. And that's actually where uh, where I started really listening to audiobooks. Um, mm-hmm. During that little, it was a small phase, but it was very critical. It seems yeah, it seems like it was a big tran- <clears throat> transitional period. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that kind of led me down the path of self-development and just applying myself, reading all these audio I guess, books. I, I guess, uh, yeah, we should talk about that now because we were talking yeah. about that earlier, uh, uh, bringing up um, um, 
the impact of, of, of books or audio books uh, and, and, and how they, they shaped you as a, as a person and um, how they changed your approach to business, I guess, or, or, or just, um, it, did you, did you know you were, you were going where you were going and you just needed that motivation or did you not know? And these push, pushed you over the edge. Like what, what, how did that happen? Cause feel, it sounds like yeah. this was a big transitional period. For sure. For sure. I feel like for every, uh, business owner, you know, you need, you need new information. You can't survive off of regular, uh, like just, you know, TV and just, you know, that sort of information diet. You're not yeah. getting anything useful. You know, if you're just watching Friends all day, mm-hmm. unfortunately, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not close back on that. <laughs> yeah, I've been telling everyone I lately, I just like you have to mix in some amount of educational content. Yeah, to your routine. Absolutely. Yeah. If not, you just you just stagnate. And uh, that my uh, my manager, one of my managers there at the solar uh, at the solar uh, spot where I was selling solar, he was like he was like, listen, bro, you need to listen to this. And he was like, "We're gonna send you that. We're gonna send you. We're, we're gonna send you down a rabbit hole. We're not gonna send you that that quick. You know, we just want to start you off slowly." What What was it? Um, that was a sales book by Brian Tracy. It was a. Uh, it was like the psychology of selling. That's what oh, it was okay. called. Yeah. And so, really, really great book, mind you. Um, selling is like ninety percent of what anybody does. You know, if you if you want to be successful in whatever you do, like you're selling yourself in one way or another. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was the first one. And then I just, you know, went on, uh, you know, it just kept, you, you read those books or you watch, um, people on YouTube even like talking about things like that. And then you, you get content, you get one block of content that recommends four other things. Yeah. And then Mm -hmm. that's the the rabbit hole. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. you get recommended four other books to read or, or another YouTube channel. And then all of a sudden you, you just have branch out and you got all this stuff to, take in yeah that's how it went pretty much um because you know they always recommend those and uh so that's what i did and um it made me like uh i guess like be more critical of my lifestyle so do you think do you think that that um was there was there a straw that broke the camel's back that that really um pushed you into this this is uh this is my my thing now i I, i'm not I'm not worried about the, the mattress spot. I'm not worried about the, the solar job I have. I, I'm going into production. And you what? got that G a week to pay back, right? The what? The G, was it a G a month? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what the timetable yeah, yeah, was no, there. No, no. It was, it was six close. months. Yeah, I was I was doing the, the you know, it's funny. My my, my, my cousin, he he's, a, he's, he's one of my, uh, yeah, it's terrible. Damn. On top of everything else. On top of all the credit cards. And uh, my cousin, he's a great dude, man. He's a... Uh, He's on. He's one of my like day ones, you know. He was that cousin that I always got together with when as a kid, and we would just hang out, have a great time. So he was he was, he hooked me up with that job because he was like, you know, I'm making bank here. Um, I'm gonna you know put my cousin on, but the thing about it was that it was a new location. It was a, a Sax Fifth in New York. Um, oh, and I, it, I remember this. Yeah, it was it was a that. new location. So they actually ended up closing that location because it, it wasn't. It just didn't work out. It just didn't work out. The market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so and mind you, he did this all in my best interest, you know. But uh, it was it, it is what it is. Um, after that, I came back to the master spot, and uh, probably like another year went by, and um, and like the second time, you know, I got called for. Um, you know, this possible job opportunity. And I, I didn't quit. You know, I just mm-hmm. told them that I wanted to be put on part-time and they they weren't having it. They w- refused to put me on part-time. So mm-hmm. it was like they forced me to quit. Wow. So, you know, that happened. You know, I um, I got to do audio for a bit. I was doing live sound mm-hmm. um, with, uh, with some bands. Uh, and that's basically how I was making things work until the pandemic hit. And that that stopped all the uh, all the audio work, all the live sound work. For all sure. the live yeah. sound work went out the window for sure. I think I think I, think, I had a question about. Oh, go ahead, Eric. I Sorry. think this is a fine point to transition to the question I've been meaning to ask the whole time. So I just I felt like you might have a good take on this. So what I wanted to ask you, I'll read it word for word here. Yeah. Is your own artistry and the production you do for yourself a conscious effort to promote the production side of your business? 
Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think whether it was conscious or not, like it, it clearly worked. I think you are your best. Whether it's intentional or not. Your best advertisement is the music you put out for yourself. I think, uh, I think that's been clear for a long time is that you listen, anyone around this area has heard at least one of your songs. Like, whether, like anyone our age, you know, they're like, oh yeah, I've heard, I've heard it. And they, whether they like it or not, that's up to them, that's up to their right, brain. Right, yeah. But they've heard it and they know whether they like it or not, it sounds good. And that is great advertising. It's the best advertising you can get. Yeah. It's a uh, it's uh, a yeah. two oh, birds like, one stone. Oh, you like his production? He's, oh, uh, he did that for free he's, for he's, himself. Imagine, he's, what he would, he's, imagine what he would do for three hundred bucks. He's, he's a he's a he's a producer. Uh, I'll give you his card. <laughs> I used to hand out Marty cards all day. Nah, you know what's funny, man? I feel like I'm always busiest when I'm recording my albums. <laughs> that's, mm. that's I always get mm-hmm. super busy because I get into promotional mode, mm-hmm. and everybody wants to hit me up for this. You know, they want to record, they want a video. It's great. Um, no, but yeah, yeah, it's it just it makes sense, you know, because um, people. I feel like a lot of people would like to to you know dedicate some time to that part of their life, you know, mm-hmm. and put out a song. You know, who doesn't have that that aspiration? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think we're about wrapping up the first uh, section here, our our largest section. Do you, you want to hit any of these last couple of questions? Yeah, yeah I did. I did. I I'll just as a quick one. Um, do you do you um. You ever take emails from any clients you have and like uh, generate an email list? So like I see okay. you tweet um, mm-hmm. rates sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. up or down or, or whatever. Um, I, I I thought about that and was like, I, I wonder if Martin uh, like has an email list that like he could maybe do the same thing for if he has that or or if he's considered that or some other kind of mechanism. Yeah, what do you I've um, I was using the service that was building an email list. Uh, I'd never got quite around to using it. Right? Okay, so but so it, you didn't you didn't not use it be like it was just like you just didn't get around to it, or did you think that like it was just like not worth it? No, no. A lot of people promote the use of email lists, and I just kind of been overlooking it. Okay, honestly. yeah. And I was just curious. I, I, I think I think it is a, I, effective. I wonder. Effective I wonder how it would work for you. Yeah, I just uh, yeah. You're absolutely right. Um, that's something that I should probably look at. So you'd say probably a lot of it's uh, just word of mouth or repeat business, that kind of stuff? Yeah. Uh, word of mouth, uh, Instagram, yeah, we, social we, media. Yeah, we, we touched on, on oh, yeah, uh, refer things. And we, yeah. we've talked about that a little already. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we could touch on this last one too real quick. Yeah. How do you see this growing in the future? So you started with uh, audio engineering and, mm-hmm. and um, music production, and then you, you pivoted into uh, videography. Um, do you, I mean, and, and those are two big things that you could mm-hmm. just... Um, you know, Bank keep on. building. Mm-hmm. But yeah. do you, do you see, like how do you see it building? Do you, do you see you just um, perfecting those um, those things, or do you do you consider adding more? Do you consider um, creating a record label? Like, where do you see it going? Like, what's gonna um, I what's think, gonna be Marty After Dark International in five, ten, twenty years? Um, you know, I actually I feel like the the cool thing about you know doing videography and doing audio engineering in addition to my music production is that it gives me a little bit more leverage when I'm dealing with artists and dealing with record labels and dealing with uh, people who have, you know, who regularly would have leverage over me Mm -hmm. because, you know, it would be, it's very commonplace for me if I, you know, if I had a song with an artist, you know, where, where the management or the record label would try to get over on me and try to be like, oh, well, you know, we're going to change this, that, and the third, you're not going to, we're going to, we're going to put you on as a co-producer and, you know, they could just try to exploit you that way. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to have something that I can leverage with because, you know, if you're developing an artist, you know, you when, have to, when you say leverage, are you talking about, um, the, the fact that you can offer more than one service? Is right. that what I mean? Yeah, yeah okay. basically. And, um, when you're developing an artist as a record label, you know, you're looking at your budget and you're, you're looking at, uh, you know, how do you get them spending. out there? What's that? And, and how you get them out there? For sure. For sure. Yeah. So, you know, that's why, uh, for me it was, it was, it was, I think it was critical to build myself as a brand. And as someone that, you know, um, can take care of uh, a lot of parts of the same business, you know? And, um, so in the future, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I want to get into being a record label. I feel like as a music producer, you have a lot of really advantages because 
once you produce the song, you know, that, that's it. It's, it's yours 50%. Uh, the record label can kick and scream, but they're going to have to give you that, you know, mm-hmm. uh, if they want the record to come out. Mm-hmm. You know, if not, then that's a, that's a legal yeah, I guess, issue. And I guess that's kind of more pure, I feel, because that, that, that makes your job simply to make the best product you can. For sure. Because that has the best potential. I, I mean, imagine you're, you know, you're waiting for a hit, but mm-hmm. as long as you keep doing the best you can every time, yeah. you better your chances of getting there every time. Yeah, and you're, you're expanding your network at the same time with mm-hmm. everyone. Cause uh, um, like just for example, you know this guy Dan Sur from Utah, he's opened me up to another network, you know, mm-hmm. a bigger network that I wasn't reaching before. Yeah, you know, so um, I, I think I think it's just uh, it's just a matter of being persistent. All right, we are we are entering Mike's financial corner. This is a, a segment that I have doubts about a little bit. I'm excited for it, Martin. Are yeah. you comfortable talking about your income? Let's get it. I love that so much. All right, we can skip the if not then question. <laughs> um, no, no, I'm going to hit it. I'm going to hit because there's a portion of it that's good. So I, I, I really respect your answer, Martin. Yeah. Um, because um, I've been really, we've only done one, but uh, we, we, me, and Mar, uh, me and Eric have talked a lot about this question. And um, I, I think that uh, it's, for some reason in our society, very weird to talk about money and, and how much we make or whatever we do with our money. And uh, I, I just wondered if you had any um, um, input on that, uh, if you think that uh, there's a reason for it or if you think that it's a good thing or a bad thing or if there's room for improvement or if it doesn't really matter. Do you have thoughts? Yeah. Um, it's because people like to gloss over um, just how little they try, mm. honestly. Mm. Because, you know, once you bring the numbers up and it's like quantified. Yeah. And nobody can argue numbers. Yeah. And, you know, like uh, I, I, me and Mike were talking about this while we were prepping for the podcast. And I said, uh, you know, I think the world would be so much better if we shared the information with each other that we share with huge corporations and government institutions. <laughs> You know, it's not like we're yeah. hiding it. Yeah. Like the people who are exploiting us, they yeah. have the information regardless. Yeah. They mm-hmm. know what you make. Yep. They know yeah. what you buy. They know where all yeah. all the money's moving. The, the people that but can we make... don't share that with each other. Yeah, we, we, where we could actually use that to grow as a people and help each other. Yeah. Um, so so I want to thank you for your your answer and yeah, the, in, in the affirmative because I think that's it's the only way we we get forward with our own personal finances is to learn from each other. Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 that, that's, and it doesn't even, you know, if your answers aren't all positive, that's yeah. all the better, you know, learn from each other's mistakes, learn from your own mistakes, everything, you know, so continue, Mike, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, what's your annual income? I, ha- I mean, I couldn't tell you that. I couldn't tell you what my annual income is, but um, it's probably not a lot. I'll can tell you, you that. No, can, uh, can, you, can you estimate? Um, t- I would want to say like maybe 25K. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's, I'll just say that that's solid for a personal endeavor uh, yeah. of this size, you know? Yeah. For, yeah. for the hours you probably put in, that's re- very, very good. Yeah. I mean, the thing about this business is that it's very, um, um, you know, it has its ups and downs, you know, it's not always the same, you know, when you, when you're working for yourself, you know, some, you know, just, you know, I have a really high hourly, but you know, I may not work every day of the week, right? you know? Yeah, and, um, and you can sp- you can spend that time doing a lot of things, and mm-hmm. and I, I think that you're the type of person that's spending that time to to just make the business better, in, in yeah. one way or another, in, including yeah. listening to audiobooks and 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 what we touched on earlier, how that yeah. uh, impacts you. Well, it's about like uh, for me at least, I can't I can't speak for everybody, but for me, it's about um, what makes the most sense and what's uh, using my time most effectively because. You know, um, I've actually had to like decline work, you know, uh, if it's not, if it's not really worth it, like Mm -hmm. I'm cutting down days. Uh, so, you know, once the pandemic came around and I was getting back that, the the live audio work, you know, I had to, I had to even cut that off, you know, Mm -hmm. because it wasn't getting to the point where it was beneficial for me. Um, with videos, it's like. You know, I had I had a weekend where I had a nice weekend out in New York and, you know, made, you know, like a, a stack, you know. Yeah, that, that's what um, it wasn't my next question. But um, 
Um, yeah, I was going to affect you. Uh, I was going to ask you how uh, Corona affected your business, which you kind of mentioned a little bit. Not not so much your business, but um, your work. Um, and, um, and another thing is uh, just your your travel for work. I mean, you you're you're making 20 roughly $25,000 a year at now at this point which will probably increase you're you're able to visit all these different places and 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 really have these uh special experiences and and document them too like like seeing um seeing videos that you shot i think uh in in Texas with like these um really awesome murals in, in yeah. the background like like just um the the, the places that that this business has brought you i i don't know i i don't know i i don't know if you would have you would be able to speak better on than me because it's you but i, I don't know if you would have been in these places otherwise you know definitely I mean? not i've never received the type of opportunities that i received uh before working for myself right uh because all, all these every time i go to these places they're always business trips so they're always they're, they're always tax write-offs so that's, it, that's another, like, that's know. another huge thing. So, um, yeah, uh, let, let's go into that a little bit. So, um, uh, do you, are you, um, do you have an LLC or, uh, it's an LLC. It's an LLC. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's, what's the official name? Marty after dark international limited liability company. Nice. Um, what, when was that established? April, 2020. Um, how how did the process go? Was it smooth? Was it complicated? Was no, it, it was pretty expensive? straightforward. It was honestly long overdue because I could have I could have written off a lot of other stuff. Well, I think depending I guess depending on the nature of the business, I think you can write things off yeah. without it mm-hmm. um, uh, as a sole proprietorship or mm-hmm. something, right? That's what I do. do yeah. But I think I, there either I don't know if there's a <clears throat> there's differences. But. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the limited limited liability um, protects you, obviously. Um, um, you mentioned your annual income has it has it been growing? I think was it was it my less, business my um, business side of things has, has grown a lot. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean before it was only like recording people, and I was I was probably charging like forty an hour. It was like. Uh, you know clients here and there but now i moved to like a more like a song like a flat rate for per song to record people Mm -hmm. um my rates for production have gone up my rates for video have gone up um so uh just 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 the the act of conducting a transaction uh with me has just gone up yeah well i mean i think i think that's a good thing um Excuse me. Do, um, do you do anything specific for uh, tax purpose, purposes? Like, do you do you set aside uh, money um, from transaction, like like ten percent oh, or something? I, if or? I, may, I think uh, I think the the better question is at the at the uh, sorry at that level of income, are you paying taxes after write offs and stuff? No. Yeah, I, I imagine. Oh, okay. absolutely not. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> yeah, so you probably get that hundred fifty bucks from Jersey. Right. Nah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 um, I didn't have to worry about anything last time I, I wrote uh, anything off. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, um, I, I basically get to manage my schedule, um, and uh, take these trips that a lot of people may not even take in their lifetime. You know, yeah. and and I get to write it off at that. So um, I don't really have to set anything. If anything, I'm, I'm actually like every time I get a big job, I'm putting. I'm I'm making sure that I spend a certain amount of it, you know, to write, write it off. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I do. I I don't really set any money aside anymore. All right, here, here's a here's um here's a way for a little Marty mini- to earn some money. A mini game here. All right, mini game. <laughs> What's your credit score? If it's higher than mine, oh, you get shit. twenty bucks from me. No, it's not right higher now. than yours, man. Uh, what is it? I think it's six forty three. I can check it right now. Hit that credit karma, baby. I'll open mine real quick. I'll say while while they're doing this, uh, credit was a bit of a problem for me as well. I had only had one card really, but I uh, I charged it off a couple of years ago. Didn't pay it off. Got charged off. Yeah. I just uh, just this year I paid it off in full all at once. Just tired of having that over my head, and uh, just applied and got approved for my first secured credit card. So I'm start building it back up. Hell Good yeah. process for me too. I'm in the mid 600s as well. Uh, Get it? I was almost. I was close. Six forty-four. Yeah. All right. 
So yeah. So the, the, the we're looking at the credit six. card. But hold on, I have to preface this. I'm I was twenty thousand, at least twenty thousand dollars in debt. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. a year and a half ago, and, and so so the whole time, yeah, it's like I've been paying it off. I got a, a credit cards program, and I've been I've been um, I've been living my life and paying my credit cards off. So I mean. That's why, like, I, I just feel like it was the right move overall. Um, I've been living a very fulfilling life and uh, getting back on the right track at mm-hmm. the same time. So it's like, you know, you can, how, how can you lose? Yeah. Excellent. Um, well, I guess last one for the Mike's Financial Corner. Um, what, do, you, uh, do you have any kind of retirement plan? Uh, what, do you, what, do you, what are your views on retirement for yourself? My views what, what on think? retirement at this moment. Is that um, I probably would never want to retire from what I'm doing. It's what Patrick said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we'll find that pr- probably uh, more more often than not in small business owners. I think sure. yeah. you're doing no, what you're passionate makes, about. Makes sense, but I feel I you know I'm st- I'm still going to keep asking. It, I think. Yeah, it's a good question. I'm still going to ask it. Yeah, um, um, and and you know who knows me? I might not make it to retirement. Mm, you never know. Some real shit. Live fast, die young. It's a curveball for you. <laughs> <laughs> Let that sit in your noggins. Uh, does that wrap up Mike's Financial Corner? That wraps up Mike's Financial Corner. Uh, Martin, I really want to thank you for, um, honestly, I think uh, really, um, a, a, I think, I don't know if it's the right word, attaining what um, Eric sought out to do with this podcast is is the the transparency mm-hmm. and, um, and, and just being honest about about what's going on with with the small business that you operate, I, I'm I, I see so much potential, and and I'm I'm just really happy that you are um, comfortable sharing everything with us because mm-hmm. it's not a comfortable question to ask people. Oh yeah, and it's know? not it's not comfortable to answer. Letting the ego go. Yeah, um, and I, I appreciate that so much. <laughs> yeah, man, no, uh, you got to keep it real. All right. Absolutely. Let's yeah. move into a. Uh, Put flip the script a little bit, wrapping up Mike's financial corner, moving into the end segment here. Uh, Martin, do you have any questions for us in any uh, any context? Um, when is this podcast coming out? It's a good <laughs> question. Uh, so w- right now we're banking a couple episodes. Um, so let's say if we uh, probably release, I, I think a good plan would be we, re- we release one probably around the time we record the next one. And then, uh, so that'd be the first episode to be the week after that. So I imagine within two to three weeks. Awesome. Yeah. Just let me know. I'll tag you guys and, um, and share it. Um, it's a little fun one. Uh, we find, or I find at least people who are operating small business endeavors run into strange people. Uh, do you have any, uh, <laughs> interesting, odd anecdotes about weird people or just uh, something crazy that happened on the job? I don't know. Ah, uh, on the job. Sheesh. I mean, there's really too many to even. Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of lot of strange people. I mean, really, the most the most I get is people who expect me because I I, I take the effort into my music and you know promote it in such ways that people just bombard me with music links mm. and and you know. It's oh, like well, let, me, let me set you up a little bit. Like, <laughs> I, gonna, uh, where are you going with I mean, I imagine there's got to be. I'm sure you, you lament often. Uh, oh, this person coming at me with like this kind of request. How ridiculous they think I would accept that. Or like, what, what's like the most egregious? Like, <laughs> that's what I was gonna. Ask. Like someone like, could you do this how, for how do free? I, how do I? How do I not get you to produce my album? <laughs> um. <laughs> hmm. That's a good one. I mean, from from my from my experiences, it's really just the uh, like, just people coming with with uh with no budgets. It could be like you know, I mean, like it's like it's, I feel like I, maybe it's because I'm a producer and I've I've heard this from so many other people. But you know, like the whole uh, you know, uh, you know, bro, um, you know, we're, we're I'm really serious and um, <laughs> my music's gonna blow and. Like, trust me, bro. I have all the street cred. How's it gonna blow without <laughs> exposure? Making a song, <laughs> bro. Pay trust me. Exposure. Like, I just want, I just want a team, bro. Mm-hmm. 
Oh yeah, you and bro, everyone else. Bro. I just want a team, bro. I'm trying. No, no, I'm trying to put together a team, bro. I'm putting together a team, bro. Right, why, why don't you put together like a small savings and then you can <laughs> afford to buy a team? <laughs> All yeah, right, dude. I can't. <laughs> I, th- I think we should hit that next one too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what advice would one. you give to someone who is trying to pursue the same type of business I'm trying to get into producing? Okay. Um. I feel like you have to be you have to be a little ready to risk it. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to be um you don't do this if you're looking for money. Don't do it if you're looking for money. Mm-hmm. Uh you got to do it uh, you know, you have you need to love it really honestly. You got to be in love with it. You have to be passionate about it. If you're doing it for money, you're probably not going to be successful on some real. Um cuz you need more fire than that, you know. And my advice to that person would be uh listen to this episode. Uh, Marty's done a great job of breaking down, you know, how how to network, how to contact, how to learn, how to, you know, build relationships with people. That's what it's all about. It's about building relationships primarily. Yeah, the the relationships are probably the most valuable part. The first half of the episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Uh, All right, and we're moving into the plug section. Uh, Anything you want to plug, Marty? Um, Anything you got going on? Yes, I have an album coming out. It's called it's called the life and times. What? I didn't even know this. What? I'm so excited. Marty the Bill. The, <laughs> uh, the life and times. What? The life and times. When the heck is that dropping? I don't have a date yet, but it's dropping. It's right. uh, wow. I, I would say like maybe uh, in two months. Fall you heard it here first. Maybe, maybe. fall 2021. <laughs> well, wait, we're say. in August, right? Uh, September, yeah. October. Damn, damn. I guess yeah, October. I mean, right. yeah. That's mad exciting. All right, yeah, absolutely. I'll try to get it what out the, sooner. What we'll, the hell? We'll, we'll hype that <laughs> to like our a long four time. viewers for sure. Like, yeah, um, you'll have four listeners at least. <laughs> and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. At this point, uh, we move into our ending game. This game involves money and a chance to win it. What? All right, We're Marty, your money? second right. chance to win money. Let's get it. I have here two $10 bills. <clears throat> Marty, are you familiar with the prisoner's dilemma? I am actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this won't be uh, too foreign to you. I've, I've modified the game. Oh man, this is going to get ugly. Who, who's the prisoner? <laughs> Who am I dealing with? <laughs> so I'll break it down uh, one more time. Uh, since uh, Okay. The concept of the prisoner's dilemma is there's two people. They have the option to turn on each other or to not, you know, to stick it out as prisoners, not, they're not rat on each other. If, they, if one rats on the other, the one who rats goes free. Uh, if they both rat, they both go to jail. If neither rat, they both do a small amount of time. <laughs> I don't have a prison, but I have two ten dollar bills <laughs> or nothing. <laughs> so the options here will be: uh, you and Mike can either choose to split this money. Uh, you get to go home with ten dollars, or you can I, any of you, either of you or both could choose to steal <laughs> to steal the money from the other person. <laughs> so you could go home with twenty. The other bro, person goes home with me, zero. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and obviously, if both of you try to steal. You both get nothing. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the options here are take ten dollars, <laughs> zero dollars, or twenty. Bro, are you serious, bro? And once again, you- uh, Mike, I'm asking you to leave the room at this time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Mike, get your mind right. <laughs> I would ask Dad what he says. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is hilarious. All right. Didn't even close the door. Mad rude. What a scumbag. I should steal it from him, right? All right, yeah. So, uh, what do you what are you thinking? Uh, I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll let you know what I know mm-hmm. from previous episode. Okay. Uh, Mike seems pretty set on trying to split the money. That was his move last time. And he said he's going to do it every time. But I'll let you know right now that makes it that much easier to steal. If you know he's not going to steal from you, that's free twenty bucks. Okay. Well, uh, I'm an I'm an idealist, so I'm going to split it. Are you sure? I'm going to split it. Now, uh, let me just put it to you this way. So you, you're, you're splitting it because you think Michael split it too, right? <clears throat> um, I don't know what he's going to do. Well, <laughs> if he splits it, then you both get it. You know, it's, right. it's nice. But he, he can could keep it. If he, if, he, if he decides to steal it, he's going to keep it. And I'll put it to you this way. Yeah. If you steal mm-hmm. and he splits... Mm-hmm. You can take control of the situation and split it yourself. <laughs> you see, I like I like that. I like that. It's very, yeah, no, no, that makes sense. Now you can secure the way you the added that that little 
twist. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I wonder like if this is how like real evil villains think in real life. Mm. Kind of makes you wonder. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to just, I'm going to take control of the situation since these people don't know what to do with their freedoms. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to split. Final answer. I'm going to split. Yeah. All right. At this time, I ask you to leave the room and uh, get Mike back in here. No talking. Hit me with Eric. Give me your spiel. Welcome back. <clears throat> Thank you. You know the game. Yes. You know your opponent or your ally. Hmm. How, what, what do you think Martin why, chose? Why did you say opponent first? Maybe that tells something about me. Who knows? Uh... What do you what do you think Marty shows? I don't know. Do you know Marty? You've lived with him. We both Marty, lived with him. Marty is so much more difficult than Patrick because Patrick is Patrick was a um a young idealistic kid. Well, I mean, he was he was an, he was a, a new friend, mm -hmm. right? So and you, you want to make a good impression. He was but also he's he's very sweet, very mm -hmm. sweet guy. I'm not saying Martin is not sweet. I, I will say Marty's nickname is Marty Mar the villain. That's that's a good point. And and I I think if if I were to be what, what's the what's the terminology steal or, or turn yes. him in? What's what is it? We're going what's to steal. If if I were ever to steal, mm -hmm. I think I think it might be against Marty. Oh. I think it might be because oh. I feel like he would do that to me. Because <laughs> why not? <laughs> And if he did, do you want to let him have it? And uh, let me put it to you this way: if you want to make sure that you guys <laughs> split the money, and you think he's going to split, you can just steal it and give him half. So wait, if we both steal, we we split it? No, if you both steal, you get nobody half. gets it. Yeah, but I'm saying if you think he split and you steal, you can give him half. And make the split yourself. But if you say, "Oh, I'll just split naturally," and he stole, then he gets to go home with it. You didn't even have a chance to defend yourself. I'm stealing. You are stealing? I'm stealing. Final answer. All right. Uh, go get Marty. <laughs> Mike has changed his tune. Last time he said he would never yeah, steal. Marty the villain. You hear? Welcome back, gentlemen. I've this, spoken this, to you. This is a dark day. I've spoken to you both individually. Uh, I've gotten your answers. Uh, how do you, how do you guys feel about your trust level for the other person right now? Well, I I have faith, so <laughs> I feel terrible. <laughs> and that's because Mike stole from me, Marty. Damn, he took the money, and Marty tried to split. Mike was certain you would steal from him. I thought you were going to steal from me, bro. Oh, it's all right. He said if he was a good person, you would split it. But he didn't think you were a good person. What? Oh, That's not what I said. Play it back. Is that what I said? Let's play back the tape. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> well, here you go, Mike. Here's your, here's your blood money. Oh, and he's tried to split it. All right. That makes sense, though. Come well on, done. Come well on. done. Come on. Why not? Mike why has not? chosen to split it. I think it. that goes to show you something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. <laughs> But there's something there. It showed you something. It showed me something. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us uh, once again on the Sales Report <laughs> Podcast. This has been a very fun episode <laughs> and a very interesting turn of events at the end. Uh, one more time, I'm Eric Shorter. I'm here with Michael Smith. And, the <laughs> and we've both been here with Marty after Dark International. Check out the links around this thing, and uh, it's been great to see you. We love you. Goodbye.